welcome everyone to the um, session on uh, position papers and we are going to have four talks seven minutes each uh, the questions will be uh, taken after the session so we will have 10 minutes for q a in which uh, every uh, everyone is um, uh, posing their questions and uh, all the others will be there to uh, answer them so to, uh, now we have Philip from KTH, and Philip, uh, the floor is yours. We are excited to hear about your work. So uh, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to uh, the presentation of our position paper, uh, which is called Why We Need to Align Academic Education and Industry Requirements with Respect to Machine Learning. So I'm Philip Cornell. I'm an industrial PhD student in my first year, and I've formed this position together with Fredrik Olsson, who is a senior researcher at RISE in Stockholm as well. So the main message that we want, wish that you guys take away today is basically that we believe that academia today, to a large extent, rather teaches a blueprint and not really the toolbox needed for implementing machine learning in practice. So what do we really mean by this? Well, if we look at what academia teaches, we believe the focus on research and theory can be a bit too strong when it comes to machine learning. And it's a complicated topic, but in academia, from our experience, uh, courses offered on machine learning mainly focus on teaching the fundamentals and the theory behind learning and how the model, how different models learn and the properties of them. And this is, of course, very important to know for a practitioner but it does not really suffice to prepare the students for actually implementing the things in real life settings and in practice. So in other words, they're taught a blueprint for what machine learning is and what it can do, but not really the practicalities of it and how to use it to deploy it in practice. And a simple analogy between the two is that while academia really teach the students how to build good prototypes and run models in Jupyter notebooks, uh, it often stops there in many in many programs. So what could, uh, academia needs to teach more is how to make these models work actually in production and not only how, how to construct and train them. And we can compare it rather to a one-off uh, use versus using a model many times. And academia only teaches students how to use the models once a lot of the time. Um, so there was a paper called uh, Challenges in Deploying Machine Learning, a survey of case studies. Where they, uh, where Andre Palais and his co-authors discuss four things that are needed to deploy models in practice, and these are data management, of course, which is preparing the data to be used in models, and these involves things such as data engineering, imputing missing values, and so on and so on. Then we have model learning, uh, which is training a model using a training set. And this is, of course, taught universally across academia as it involves the most fundamental part of training a model. Um, then you have model verification, which is kind of verifying that the model adheres to certain functionality requirements. And while this is partially taught in the courses, uh, what, are, what is not really taught are these kind of requirements that are involved for, um, lear for requirements, for example, in the software engineering requirement or those kinds of requirements. Um, finally, there is the model deployment, and uh, which is what we believe is lacking to qu quite a large extent in many academic settings. Um, deploying the model to work in practice and serve consumers in real time. And in our point of view, only the model learning and partially the verification is mostly covered in academic programs that is focused on machine learning, as we said. Now, what are the consequences of this? Well. There are negative consequences for basically uh, all stakeholders involved uh, if we look at an un industrial perspective. So first of all, uh, students, which later will be the newly hired people at the companies, uh, will often not really be prepared enough to produce the systems that will that has to fulfill the requirements of a successful usage of uh, ML models. And this can often cause a shock and possibly a dissatisfaction among the newly hired, hired employees, which can basically lead to a higher churn rate. Uh, you can have people leaving the companies in dissatisfaction because their, employ, uh, their employment was not what they expected. And for the companies, the cost of training and time until a new hire is uh, productive is longer uh, since the training has to be done more on site 
and a possibly higher churn rate will also increase this cost even more. Now, for consumers, uh, there's a risk that this lack of training results in poor performing models. And this, of course, reduces the quality of the models and the experience for use for the, for the users if the company, for example, is deploying a recommender system. Now, what can we do? Uh, well, we believe and we've seen uh, in the past few months since we submitted this that it's very much heading in the right direction. And uh, we've seen a great number of examples that emphasizes this type of education. Um, but we believe it still needs to go faster and the integration must be very strong. Uh, we need to have academia better preparing the students for using machine learning in practice than we do today because many machine learning programs, uh, we believe, miss this part. Now, first of all, we want to emphasize that a stronger collaboration between academia and industry is needed. And we think that possibly more courses of this uh, being introduced in the curricula of ML uh, machine learning programs would be good. Some examples would be introducing uh, machine learning operations courses um, and teaching the philosophy that machine learning is rather software engineering with a focus on machine learning rather than only machine learning. Now, what we have some good examples. Now, I'll say that I'm already running a bit out of time, but I'll try to go through these as quick as possible. Um, from my personal experience, one of the best courses that I took uh, as a master's student at Linköping University was a course called Software Engineering uh, or Programmutvecklingsmetodik in Swedish. In this course, we had 25 people grouped together that together formed